When I was 19, I traveled to Europe. And while I was in Europe, I went to a country called Germany and to a city called Hamburg, where I stayed with an old family friend. And the old family friend decided he was going to do something special with me. So one day we took the train out into the countryside to visit one of his friends. His friend was a German Lutheran pastor, and he was the biggest person I've ever seen in my life. He was probably, he seemed to me like about seven feet tall with broad shoulders and a giant Viking beard. <laughs> he welcomed us and we had a wonderful, wonderful dinner and, and my family friends said, oh, let's give Let's give him a tour of the church. And so we went. He was a Lutheran pastor. We went on a tour of the church. The church was in a farmhouse that was built in the 1500s. So the building was 500 years old. And my friend said, let's show him the basement. And so we went down into the basement where the German Lutheran pastor had a wood shop saws and hammers and all sorts of other tools. And there in the corner of the room, there was a piece of furniture. It was giant. It looked like a wardrobe, you know, open it up and you can see, you know, you could put like a whole closet's worth of clothes in there. Although I realized looking at it that it wasn't a wardrobe, I realized what it was. It was a casket that he had made. And the pastor opened up the casket and there inside, tacked inside, was a piece of paper. Looked just like this, an order of service the order of service for his own funeral. Translating in from the German for me, he read and he took down the the parts. And then he got to the end and he smiled and said, O wenn the saints go marching in. I want to be in that number. (laughs) He said it with such a smile. He was hoping that his family and friends would remember him with singing and smiles and happiness and joy. Not the sort of thing that you usually have at a memorial service in Germany. What we're talking about this morning isn't easy, is it? Some people find talking about remembering loved ones that we've lost to be too sad. Who among us wants to be sad? Some people find talking about remembering loved ones to be scary. And who wants to think about things that are scary? Or some people find talking about remembering loved ones to be uncomfortable. And why do we choose to be uncomfortable? And so I ask you, be honest, has, has this sort of thing ever made you feel sad or scary or uncomfortable? Be honest, raise your hand. So who had the bright idea of making this a multi-generational service anyway? (laughs) Oh, that was me, wasn't it? Uh. So I invite you, if you put your hands up before, put your hands up again, and I would invite the children at this time to look around at all the people whose hands are up and know that other people find this sad and scary and uncomfortable. 
And so I just want to say we're doing something brave and courageous today, aren't we? This morning before the first service, I put a picture on the altar. And all through the service today, I will tell you what senses I have been sensing. I have been sensing the gentle rocking of a boat and the spray of salt water. I've been remembering the taste of barbecue. And I have been remembering the crinkling of an order of service. The picture I put up there was for a dear, dear minister friend of mine named Tim Jensen. He was my minister when I was a college student. He um, was, my, was my minister, mentor, and friend, and he passed away about, about seven or eight years ago. Tim was not a well-known minister. He never served a church much larger never served a large church, and, and most of the churches he served had about 70 members at most. He is not, doesn't have his name on the cover of any books. No awards are named for him. But he was a sweet, sweet soul and one of the most encouraging people I've ever met. He took me on my first preaching gig, we drove up to Seattle and took a ferry across the Puget Sound. That's the first time we were on a boat together. And I went to my first preaching gig on a tiny, tiny, tiny UU fellowship on the Olympic Peninsula. It met in a VW hall, and we had about 20 people there. And they gave me my first preaching honorarium, $25. <laughs> and Tim said, that's not enough, and reached into his wallet and gave me a little more. He was smart. He didn't have to write a sermon that Sunday. And then when he served on Nantucket, I took a boat out there rocking and seawater spraying. And when he lived in New England, he took me out to eat at Red Bones in Somerville, Massachusetts, the best barbecue north of the Mason-Dixon line. And I remember the order of service I held, I still hold it, when his name was spoken at a general assembly honoring ministers who have deceased. So this morning I have been imagining a rocking boat and the spray of seawater and the taste of barbecue sauce and the crinkling of paper. What images and memories have come back to you this morning? What feelings have come into your imagination, have come into your senses, have come into this space this morning? What smells and tastes What sounds of laughter and singing? What feeling of skin? What remembrances of those we love and honor? When we met to plan the music for this service, Glenn suggested that we sing 336 which only happens to be my favorite hymn in the entire hymnal. It is a beautiful, beautiful tune. The music comes from um, kind of old, holy music, plain song. The words are a translation of the amazing Russian poet Anna Akhmatova. 
and the song just flows, switching between meters. I invite you to join in singing out with joy and with tenderness, number 336, as you remember all of your memories of love. Let us sing together. (laughs) 